Okay, so it seems like most of the people that are supposed to arrive are uh, are here. So I will start the presentation. So first of all, first of all, welcome to the intro to robotics presented by uh, Daniel and I, and we'll be going over um, uh, a lot of stuff regarding robotics, how to start, and some popular competitions that you can do to learn. Um, so first of all, um, this is the uh, this workshop is part of the LogSTEM STEM application series, and this is the sixth of all the all the workshops. Um, if you're interested in any of the ones that um, to have that are below, like data analysis, statistics, Raspberry Pi, which is also going to be by Daniel and I, um, Rubik's Cube, and Intro to Big Data, uh, feel free to join any of those. So uh, now that the shameless self promotion is uh, out of the way. Um, I, we can actually start the thing. So, uh, first of all, our um, this is our agenda for today. We're first going to go over what exactly is robotics, some popular competitions, um, and then how to start learning robotics. And at the end, we will have a Q and A if you guys have any questions. Um, but feel free to ask questions along the way if you guys want us to stop at a slide or um, go back to explain something. All right. So first of all, um, what is robotics? Robotics is the study of robots, and robots are machines that can be used to do jobs. Some robots can do work by themselves. Others must always have a person telling them what to do. Um, this is the definition that is given by NASA. And just some, these pictures at the bottom are just some examples of robots. In the bottom right, you see um, autonomous arms that are used to uh, manufacture cars. Um, so that's an example of an autonomous robot, and it's very big. A Roomba is another example, um, something you would, might have at home. This is also a robot, even though it's like much smaller than the industrial size ones. And it is also autonomous. So robots can range from very small sizes to very big and industrial sizes. Lastly, you can see is um, the NASA International Space Station arm, which is um, a human controlled arm. So it's not autonomous. It's a it's piloted by humans on the space station that's made to do repairs and to keep astronauts from flying away back into Earth because then they would die. Um, so keep our astronauts alive. Uh, so obviously, as you can see, um, uh, whether it's autonomous or not autonomous, um, robots are just necessarily machines created to um, help reduce human effort, uh, sorry, make it easier for humans to do jobs. Uh, all right, so uh, move on to the next slide. So the next slide is um, about some popular competitions. So if you, obviously this is um, very, some very advanced robotics made by um, you know, thousands of employees and stuff uh, that are from like huge companies. Um, however, if you wanna start learning robotics and the skills necessary to maybe one day work at one of these companies, like maybe um, Tesla who are designing like auto, autonomous driving cars, or maybe NASA to work on like Mars rovers and stuff like that. Um, everyone has to start from some point and competitions are usually the best way to uh, learn robotics. So we'll be going over four main robotics competitions today. Um, there's many more. Uh, there's probably hundreds of competitions or at least, uh, you know, many of um, at least more than like 20 or 30 that you can look for. But here are the four big ones that uh, we want to talk about today. So first of all, there's um, there's a first series, which is um, which contains of three different competitions: first Lego League, first Tech Challenge, and first Robotics Challenge. And fourth, um, the fourth competition is a relatively new one to North America: World Robotics Olympiad. It's more popular in a lot of Asian countries such as India and China, and even the Middle East. But it's, um, but it's gaining traction in North America. So I still do want to talk about it for any of you guys that might be interested. Um, we, uh, if you see here in this picture, it's, it's First Lego League Junior, which is something that we didn't mention. But First Lego League Junior is uh, similar to First Lego League, but it's, from, uh, but it's just from grades from K to 4. So we'll be talking about grades 4 through 8, 7 through 12, and 9 through 3, which is FLL, FTC, and FRC. Uh, all right, so now that we got um, 
know the four popular competitions we'll talk about. The first one we'll talk about is um, First LEGO League. So First LEGO League Challenge is an international research and robotics competition. It's catered for people from ages four through eight. And um, the registration uh, is from May to October. So if you wanna compete in the 2022 season, now is a good time to register. And the actual competition season in which you'll be designing your robots and doing all of the relevant components of the game is from November to June. The typical team size is from four to 10 students. Um, the more students, the better, uh, since um, you know one big robot will be split up into less work so you don't have to dedicate too much time on your own and you can count on your teammates. The hardware in FLL is mainly used as Lego Mindstorm EV3 and the programming language is um, the EV3 block coding, which is the default that comes with it. Scratch uh, and EV3 Python. Scratch and EV3 Python are relatively, um, the relatively newer forms that have now been added to be compatible to the EV3, um, the EV3 brick. So, but they're also much better than the original EV3 block coding since the block coding used to have like a lot of bugs. If your code was too long or something, it would, uh, it would usually like bug out or something bad would happen. And it's also really slow and sometimes inaccurate. Um, so unlike a lot of other competition, robotic competitions offer, um, require, actually have a lot of like money involved to uh, running a team. So an FLL team, which is just a middle school team, usually cost about $1,500 to $3,000 for the first season, depending, it could be less than that, depending on like how committed you wanna be, or it could be more than that if you're like really, really committed with like a big team of 10 and you're all serious. Um, this is just a cost of the first season though. The second season and the third season and all following seasons are usually less expensive since once you've bought all the parts during the first season, uh, you can just reuse those parts, uh, such as a Lego brick and uh, other things. So usually after this, it costs maybe just about $1,000 to like $2,000 to sustain, uh, to keep a team running. Hmm? Oh, there you go. Uh, it, do you guys have a question? Do you want to um, if you're, if you're in the audience and you guys don't have a question. Oh, Far less, if there is. Well, sorry. No, less of that. That's what I, yes, that's what I okay. mean. If you're, if you're in, sorry, excuse me, but if you're in the audience and, um, uh, you guys don't have a question, um, oh, could you guys oh. please mute yourself? So, um, uh, yeah, thank you so much. All right, so moving on from FLL, um, uh, not well, not moving on, but I just want to talk about um, the Lego Monster of EV3. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is what the EV3 looks like. Um, this right here, this is the brick that comes with every Lego Mindstorm EV3 set. And the EV3 um, is a third generation in the Lego Mindstorm series. Um, it runs on like, a, it runs on a pro, a processor and uh, on Linux, but there's like a screen that you can use to like run programs, like move through code and stuff. But you do the actual programming on like a computer. Um, you can buy a lot of, uh, this is like the basic one you can buy, uh, the Lego Monster EV3 kit, as well as um, you can buy like expansion sets, as well as uh, buy specific parts to build like your own, which is uh, the one on the very right. It's a specially built robot. Um, not using the default parts. Uh, so I'll assume that all of you guys are probably familiar with the LIGO Mindstorm EV3. It's pretty popular and it's a really great way to learn. Uh, so going back to um, FLL, there's, uh, I mentioned there's four different categories. As you see, there's the robot game, robot design, research, and core values. These are the four key components that you'll be graded on. And the first one we'll be going over is robot game. So in the robot game, your team will practice a 2.5 minute match to complete as many missions as possible. I'll show you guys an example mat in the next slide. Um, so in the robot game, your team will strategize which robot game missions to solve. 
design any attachments your robot will need to complete the missions, test and refine your programs and robot design, and compete at an event. Um, so in simple words, this is just the main event, um, what you're designing your robot to do. And it's, this is much easier, um, uh, you know, it's much easier if I show you guys a picture rather than describing it to you. Um, so I'll just quickly show you guys an example board on the next slide. Um, this is what a typical FLL board will look like. This is um, the city, so this is a replay event from last year. And basically you would have to, um, the robot starts at home base in this corner, that's what it's called. And all your robot attachments and stuff are gonna go into this black box on the very left side, as well as some other initial things that you start with that you'll have to um, put onto some other, uh, uh, some other missions to complete them and earn points. Um, so I mentioned missions. Missions are, uh, uh, they're just these general like Lego things that are scattered throughout the board. Your robot has to like do something with them. Um, so for example, the tire, I believe you have to flip the tire over. And for this is a pull-up bar, you'll have to pull yourself up. A basketball hoop or you'll have to shoot some uh, shoot some things into the hoop and keep it there as well as a lot of others this one you have to slide some slide a uh, thing across and basically um, these are all each mission will earn you a specific number of points based on the difficulty the points for each mission will be um, given out during the comp during the competition details before the event starts so your robot can use the black lines to navigate, but generally speaking, uh, you'll you'll use a defined distance. You'll do a lot. They'll send you a map at the beginning of the competition, so you'll be able to practice at your home. And you usually want to uh, do a lot of practice runs to get like a defined distance correct, and you know uh, create a robot run out of uh, this entire mission to earn as many points as you have in the two and a half minutes allotted. Um, so um, this is just basically the FLL board and the robot game section of um, FLL. All right, the next section is um, robot design. This is uh, the second section you'll get graded on. Your team will prepare a short presentation on your robot design, programs, and strategy. Your team will build and build, design and build your robot, program it to solve the robot game missions, explain how your robot will act based on the code you wrote and describe your strategies for the robot game. Uh, this is basically a short presentation, uh, you know, like here, it can usually be like one minutes or two minutes to describe what your robot's supposed to do. Um, the judges probably will, will ask you some questions about, um, about some troubleshooting that you had. What are some ideas that didn't work? They'll ask you, ask you like um, some technical information, like what sensors did you use? They might ask you to show some of your example code and run it for them. Um, a lot of this is just a uh, technical stuff about how your robot works, how it's, um, so this is bef um, besides the robot game, uh, you'll have to present to them your robot and try to sell your robot. So the third category um, that you'll be graded on is research. Your team will prepare a five minute presentation to explain your innovation project. And your team will identify a problem to solve, design a solution to the problem for your community, share your ideas, learn from others, and improve your solution, and pitch your solution at an event. Uh, so this might seem a little bit confusing, but I'll explain it to you. So at the beginning of every competition season, um, the, first, uh, the first group, they will send you a competition prompt about uh, like a problem in your local society that um, occurs everywhere in the world. And they'll want you to create a solution to try to solve that and make a presentation uh, based off of that. So this has nothing to do with robotics and it's just um, something to get you thinking about how to make your community better. Uh, for example, the replay season, the theme, was, um, the theme was how to motivate people to stay more active in your community, whether that's giving them a prize or uh, giving them better facilities to uh, exercise or like run or gyms. So the research portion is uh, um, make sure this is refined because uh, 
this is, should be rehearsed and you'll present this to the judges on the day of the competition. Uh, last but not least, we have um, the core values section. And in this section, your team will demonstrate first core values throughout your season and beyond. Uh, your team will apply teamwork and discovery to, ex to explore the challenge, innovate with new ideas about your robot and project, show how your team and solutions will have an impact and be inclusive, celebrate by having fun in everything you do. Um, the core, at the competition, uh, usually there will be judges that are, um, that will like assess how your team works together. Um, and you'll also be asked to like show them your engineering notebook, which, um, which should document your everyday um, problems, troubleshooting with your everyday, uh, basically document exactly how you worked on your robot every day. Um, they'll assess you on how well your team works together, your cooperation, how you guys approach a problem. And you guys will be graded on that based on the six different first core values, uh, which are listed below, as you see. Um, and like, as I emphasize, having a very well-kept engineering notebook is important since this is a uh, mostly what they're gonna be grading you on. And like I said, an engineering notebook is something like a track record or sort of like a diary that you would keep about your robot every day and what you worked on. Um, so now that I've gone over FLL, uh, this is just like a quick YouTube clip um, of an example project. So um, I think this is really cool to, for you guys to see uh, uh, you know, example project of someone that uh, got like a perfect score on uh, FLL. So I'll quickly play that for you guys, for you guys to see. I'll just play the like the first like minute uh, so you guys can get a quick idea of uh, how the robot works. Uh, this was actually 20, uh, not the 2021 uh, season, it's like, uh, it was the 2020 season, City Shaper. Yeah, so as you see, um, uh, I think this demonstrates a good example. So uh, since there's so many different individual tasks that require different parts of a robot, the robot will often return to home base for you to uh, change attachments. And customi customizability is very important. So, okay, that's not supposed to happen. So um, if you see, um, when they go home, it's, they switch parts really fast, which is a, uh, since this is part of the time allotted. So it's important to have like a robot that's easily to switch attachments. Uh, I think you guys get the idea. Um, uh, the robot goes around completing different missions and uh, the more missions you earn, the more points you get. Uh, that's pretty much how it goes. All right, so the next competition we'll talk about is the first tech challenge, which is, which is a continuation uh, from people who finished FLL. And Daniel will uh, talk about this one. So First Tech Challenge is another one of First. First is the organization that runs all these robotics challenges. And First Tech Challenge is another one of their robotics competitions. It's every year and it's for students grade seven to 12. So for the age range, it's in between FLL and FRC. And in FTC, the teams design, build, and program robots to compete in the season's game, which is always announced at the beginning of the school year and around September. And each year there's a different there's a different season which has a different game. And the game is like a sport. And whoever, whichever team, it's a 2v2, whichever team scores the most points wins the match. 
And First Tech Challenge also values teamwork, outreach, and gracious professionalism, which is the FTC motto. And in addition to the robot, the teams also have to create an engineering notebook, which is about the engineering process of the robot and like what prototypes you went through and what challenges you faced and how you overcame them. And FTC is not just about the robot, it's also about the engineering notebook and outreach, which is reaching out to other teams and helping them, like reaching out to like your local FLL team and partnering with them or like making STEM, like having, like just a brand, uh, yeah. Um, some more information about FTC. The team size is up to 15 students. So it's bigger than FLL, but less than FRC. The hardware, everything is controlled with a robot controller app on an Android phone. And the Android phone communicates with the rope, the motors, sensors, and servos using the expansion hub. And the control hub was a new device that was released two years ago in FTC, which combines the Android phone and the expansion hub. The season is from September to April. So the kickoff, which is when they announce the, the, tur the game for that year is during September and FTC Worlds, which is usually the final tournament is in April. The programming language is Java or block coding, but block coding is not recommended because you have a lot less freedom, freedom with block coding than Java. The cost is 2,500 to $5,000 which is between FLL and FRC, but you can easily spend more. And it's also more expensive for rookie teams because they can't reuse their old robots parts. For build systems and FTC vendors, these are the main brands of FTC parts. You have Rev, GoBuilda, Tetrix, and Actabotics. This is a tournament bracket of how you qualify and make it to the next level for FTC. It depends on what area you live in. That's why there's, there's multiple sections of it. But for where I live, you have to go to a qualifying tournament first. And once you, once you qualify, then you go to a regional championship and then a state championship and then to worlds. But it, it depends on where you live. And this is a video of last year's uh, FTC game, which was Ultimate Goal. So yeah, like I said before, there's, it's a 2v2. So there's two teams versus two teams. And each team will have two drivers, which are controlling the robot with game pads and the robot has to be a certain size so people don't make massive robots. Yeah, and each team, well, each partner of two is called an alliance and two alliance face off against each other. And in each match, your teammate of one might be your enemy of another one. And it's played in the, I think it's 18 foot, by 18 foot playing field. And last year was ultimate goal and it was, you had to shoot rings into these goals and those are the goals. There's three levels of goals. There's the mid goal, low goal and high goal. And with the high goal scoring the most points. And you had to launch rings behind the white line into one of those goals, which would score you points. And that was the primary game element. It's the ring. That's what you're shooting into the goals. Those are another game element, which also help you score points if you drop them over the side of the of the field 
if you put them in the right place. And uh, uh, for, uh, FTC robots don't normally look like that. They're just doing this for demonstration. This is the official video that first releases during the kickoff in September. And so all the teams would watch this video and then they use the whole season to create a robot that can hopefully score the most points in this game. And depending on the number of rings in that starter stack, it, that, that controls where you have to put the wobble goal to earn the most points. So the first, in every year, the first section of the game is a 30 second autonomous period where you, everything is controlled with pre-programmed code. You can't use the gamepad controllers to control the robot. And then there's a two minute driver controlled period where they control the robot with the game pads, which are like Xbox 360 controllers. That's the low goal, mid goal, and then the high goal. And the high goal earns you the most points. And shooting down one of those power shot goals earns you 15 points each. So you have to strategize what your plan is going to be during autonomous. Are you going to move the wobble goal? Are you going to shoot rings? Or are you going to try and go for the power shot goals? There's a lot of strategy. And then the driver controlled period, the human player would dispense rings. And if you, yeah. If you put rings in the low goal, you get two points, I think. In the mid goals, six. Yeah, a ring in the high goal gets you six points. A ring in the mid goal gets you three points. And then the low goal, I think you get two points or one point. But basically, it's like this sport, and you try and compete to get the most points. And whichever alliance, which is the two teams, has the most points in the end wins the match. Oh, yeah, you can stop the video. And next is F first robotics competition or FRC. This is first um, oldest and hardest robotics competition. It's an international annual high school robotics competition where teams have only six weeks compared to FTC's almost whole school year to build, program, and design robots to compete in the year's game. Like FTC, there's, they cycle through games. And the robot can weigh up to 125 pounds and be up to five feet tall. So it's on a much, much larger, larger scale in F than FTC, which is why it's a lot more expensive and requires a lot more team members than FTC or FLO. And which is also why, because of the cost and the amount of people you need, there's not as much, nearly as much FRC teams as there are FTC or FLO teams. The team size is 10 to 50 students, which is, again, much more than like FTC, which you can only have max 15 students. The cost is $10,000 or $20,000, and you can spend more or less, depending on if you're a rookie team or a veteran or how much you spend on your robot, because many good teams would make multiple prototypes of their robots. And the number of teams is almost 4,000, which is a lot less than FTC or FLL, but it almost has 100,000 students. And the programming language, you can use Java, C, or C++, or LabVIEW. The hardware is the NI Robo Ryo robot controller, 
which by itself is almost a thousand dollars. And the FRC season again is only six weeks long compared to which is really short compared to FTC or FLO. And those are just some pictures of FRC robots. You can see how big and heavy heavy they are compared to FTC and how how much more complicated they are. All right, so those are all three of the first competitions starting from FLL, then um, to FTC, and lastly, FRC. Um, so those are all three uh, first competitions. And then we'll talk about a relatively more recent competition and one that's um, more popular in Asian countries, but gaining traction in North American countries as well, which is the World Robotics Olympiad. So in this competition, there's four different categories, regular, open, soccer, and future engineer. Um, there are essentially four different events that you can compete in. Just like in the Olympics, you'll be able to compete in like running, swimming, diving, or gymnastics. You can compete in any of these four. Um, the team size is about two to three students each, um, plus one coach for each team. So clearly the size of each team is much less than uh, FTC or um, FLL, and it's, it's most comparable to FLL, um, but the team size is much smaller, which means the robots tend to be um, more simpler and the tasks, uh, the tasks are more program oriented rather than hardware like oriented. Um, and the programming language is uh, the same thing as the FLL, and it uses EV3 block coding, Scratch or EV3 Python, and the hardware is also the Lego Mindstorm. Uh, the season is from January to November, and the cost is much cheaper than FTC or FLL at only about $50 to $300 per season, um, which is usually just, which is typically just like registration fees and stuff like that. Um, and there's usually you don't use too many parts for WRO since I'll, I'll show you a robot. Uh, um, in a, in a bit where you guys will see that it's like much less complex than uh, maybe the ones Daniel showed you for FRC or even the ones in FLL. All right, so the first category mentioned is the regular category. The regular category is a challenge-based competition. Students must design, construct, and program the robots to solve specific challenges on a field. Points are scored for completed tasks and the tasks should be completed under two minutes. So this, um, Obviously hearing this, this is very similar to FLL as there's a uh, task on the field to be completed and points, uh, points for completing those tasks. And the age group, there's, instead of uh, having three different competitions catered to three different age groups, um, in each of the four categories, it's split into three age groups each. And there's for regular, there's elementary, which is uh, less than 13, and junior, which is 13 to 15, and senior, which is 16 to 19. And there's some special characteristics about the regular is that um, assembly, unlike FLL, where you can pre-assemble your robot, you have to bring a robot in, all your pieces like de-assembled and assemble the robot on competition day within um, a 150 minute period. And judges will be watching you. So you can't bring in like, uh, like pre-assembled parts or anything it has to be just straight up Legos. So that's something that's very different from FLL. Um, just like FLL, it can only contain Lego parts um, and it has to be EV3 brick based. Uh, that's where the program has to be run. And it also must be autonomous, which means that once you put it in the, once you put it in the ring and you start running it, you cannot touch it. And so, oh, um, so here's an example um, project in WR. As you can see, it's like much simpler than a uh, um, FLL robots uh, or a lot of ones because generally in in, F in WRO regular, there's only one large task to be completed. Uh, as you see in this case, there's just basically one, one large task that'll take two minutes where you have to pick up, uh, you know, pick up blocks and place them in the, in the red area. Um, so therefore robots are much more specialized and don't require extra attachments. But as a result, they're also more program oriented and, um, requires a little bit more advanced programming for one robot to do this multiple things 
uh, for a long time, like without different attachments. And usually, there's, usually um, it requires a lot of line following, as you see uh, above, and um, there's not as much defined distances. So for, for people who like to program more than build actual robots with attachments, WRO regular might be the one for you. So the next category shown is um, the open category. And the open category is a project-based competition where students will create their own intelligent ro robot, robotic solutions relating to the current theme of the season. Teams will present their project and the robot model to a group of judges on competition day. Um, just like regular, the age groups are elementary, which is less than 13, junior, which is 13 to 15, and finally senior, which is 16 to 19. Some of the special characteristics also include assembly of robot on competition day. Um, however, you have to have a written and illustrated report about your robot uh, that is a maximum of 15 pages long. Uh, you also have to have a video submission in addition to uh, the judging session, which is a 10 minute judging session at the site. And there's also a special rule for each age group. Um, for the junior age group, uh, which is where a lot of people might be starting uh, WRO, um, I believe the special rule was that you had to create uh, like a presentation on how, how uh, your solution might benefit uh, your community. And basically in the 10 minute judging session, the judges will uh, evaluate from five different categories, which uh, the first of is um, the overall project. The second is um, the actual programming that goes into it. The third is engineering and design uh, the fourth is your actual presentation, and lastly is teamwork. Um, and so in the open category, basically you'll be given a two meter by two meter space to set up like a booth, and you you want to sell your uh, sell your robot idea to the judges, and, and make them like your idea with the uh, posters and um, demonstrations, and uh, you have to show teamwork as well uh, to to score well. All right, so the third category is football, which is um, something that FTC or FLL doesn't have. And it's, uh, it's basically a two versus two football match. And uh, when I say football, um, I mean soccer for those of you who are in the United States and football for anyone that's not in the United States. Um, it's, a basic, it's a soccer game, which is uh, two versus two. Each team will create two of their own robots that will face off against two opponent robots. And for this game, there's only one age group, which is 10 through 19. And there's some specific characteristics. And the game is a two five minute halves, just like a regular soccer game, except there's much less time. And after the 10 minutes is up, the most number of goals win. Um, for your robots, you're also only allowed a goalie and a forward. So you can't have like both robots sitting in goal so that like they literally can't score if they're too fat. Um, one of them has to be trying to score. And it also must be controlled not autonomously, which means once you put your robots in, you can't touch the robots. Um, and in case of something of like a stuck ball or something else, the judge will touch the robots, but you'll be um, penalized and one of your robots will be taken out for a minute if you do touch it without permission. Um, also, just like the regular category and the open category, uh, you have to assemble your robot on the competition day. Um, if any of you guys are wondering how uh, the robots would sense the ball, the ball is uh, emitting uh, infrared, infrared signals. So uh, robots would typically use infrared uh, sensors to uh, find where the ball is and try to score. All right. Lastly, the last category is uh, a new category that WR uh, that the world WRO introduced um, pretty recently. It's called Future Engineers, and it's, um, it's just a much more complex and involved version of the regular category. The overall game setup in the Future Engineers category will be the same in three consecutive WRO seasons. And from year to year, they may change or extend the task slightly to keep on pushing the limits of your robot. Um, so so some characters, key characteristics, like I said, it's the same challenge for three years. Um, you have three minutes um, instead of two minutes to complete the given task. 
And you also have to have a vehicle documentation like um, FLL where they require like an engineering notebook. Um, you have to, you know, keep track of everything and as well as like all the specs to your vehicle and stuff. Um, however, for the future engineers, um, the biggest difference is that pre-assembly is allowed. So typically your robot will be much more complex than, uh, um, than regular category robots. So this example, uh, I'm not sure which year it's from. Oh, do, does someone have a question? All right. All right. So this example is from, uh, I'm not sure which year it is, but basically you have to design a robot that can drive around uh, traffic cones, which are going to be placed, um, uh, is going to be randomly placed on the field. Uh, you have to go to the right side of a red cone, the left side of a green cone, and try to, you try to finish three laps as fast as possible while, uh, while under the rules and you'll get uh, penalized if you don't uh, follow the rules. So that's basically future engineers and uh, that's all the competitions we have to introduce to you guys. And this is a timeline uh, as well as an age group graph of all the different competitions. So F, um, FRC, FLL, um, they both happen uh, typically from like, so F FLL is like much longer season and the qualifiers are from like August all the way to, uh, all the way to December. And it takes a long time. WR also takes a long time as there's qualifiers, nationals, internationals throughout the year. And FRC typically is a, is done in a much shorter time period. And if you guys want to, uh, technically you could do two of the competitions, but uh, it is a lot of work and Typically, uh, it's more efficient to just do one competition, like just choose FT F FTC and just do well in that one rather than trying to handle two at once. All right, so Daniel will introduce you to uh, how to learn robotics for those of you that want are that are wondering where to start. Um, for how to learn robotics, especially for robotics competitions, the best way to learn about robotics is to join a robotics team for a competition like um, FLL is good if you're if you're in middle school or in element or in elementary school, and because experience is the best way to learn about robotics, especially for robot for areas of robotics such as robot design and hardware. You can't really learn um, how to design a robot or how to robot design and hardware without actually doing it. But other areas of robotics such as programming and CAD design can easily be learned online because there are a lot of online programming tutorials and online tutorials for CAD programs, such as Fusion 360, which is used in FTC and FRC. <laughs> Joining school robotics teams or club can also give you a lot of experience in robotics because I know a lot of schools, especially in my area, have school robotics teams. They might not be the best, but they're definitely good to start with and they'll definitely give you a lot of experience and many veteran robotics teams off also offer resources or crash courses in certain robotics competitions which can also be very helpful and yeah some schools also have technology and robotics classes okay so uh, now that we've finished our presentations, if any of you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, so you can put any questions in the chat to uh, private message us, uh, preferably. So yeah. Actually, you can just type it out to everyone. It doesn't matter. I have a question, right? For this year's FLL, do you know whether they will do virtual or uh, on site? Um, I'm not completely sure since I'm not participating in FLL uh, for this year. For last year, they did uh, virtually, but this year, um, I can check for you. Let me see. FLL. I know oh. for um, FTC. Last year was online and in person, so, 
and this year's going to be online and in person. So FLL will probably follow that same schedule because they're both by the same organization. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, by the way, very good pre presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so someone asked, does robotics have any engineering majors? Um, uh, of course, um, there, if you can just, I think, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I believe you can just straight up take uh, robotics um, in, high school, in, in, college, in college, but there's also a lot of other courses that are related to robotics that you'll learn while doing robotics competitions, such as computer science, which is a lot to do with programming, um, electrical and computer engineering, which is um, a lot to do with the hard, hardware side of things, uh, like designing your robots. Um, F, FTC and FRC will really practice your uh, electrical engineering skills because a lot of times you have to like build circuits, maybe use some other uh, microcontrollers or stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's if you do do robotics competitions, there's, there's definitely a lot of engineering majors that uh, you can take in college. And, there's also a lot of job opportunities, and since robots are uh, replacing a lot of jobs that are currently being done by humans, so yeah. All right, so someone else asked uh, for NJ. Do you know any good FLO teams to join? Um, I uh obviously you can, if you guys have one at your have a comp uh team at your school, that would be uh. That would be really um. Uh, that would be really great for you. That's probably a great place to start. Um, in terms of good FLL teams, I'm not sure of any, but I do know there's a team in like a uh, FLL team at a uh, storming robotics, which is in Branchburg. Uh, I, I heard they're not, they're not bad. So I think that's a good place. That's a good team to join. Um, can you e estimate the average skill level of participants in FLL? Um, um, to look it oh, uh, to answer the question to look for any good FLL teams to join, you can just look at the standings or like the leaderboards because for all FTC tournaments and all all the qualifiers and all the state tournaments, you can always they're all online in the first database, so you can just check that and see the top scoring teams in your state. All right. Can you estimate the average skill level of participants in FLL? Um, uh, it's kind of hard to say. I don't know. Wait, Daniel, do you get, do you know how to answer that? Like, can you estimate the average skill level of participants? Like, um, uh, I guess it just depends on the team because there's some really advanced private teams and some school teams which just mainly do it for fun and aren't that serious. Yeah, I, I I don't know if I can say there isn't average. Uh, you kind it's just kind of whatever it is every year. Um, so it's kind of um, you can you can dive head first and see how it goes. Uh, do you need to learn programming for it to be able to do robotics competition? No, it depends. Um, because you're always going to join a team and you're not going to be the one that that's doing everything. So you probably don't need to learn programming. Usually in like FTC teams or FLL teams, people would focus on their individual areas. It's not like everyone would do a little bit of everything. People would do what they're best at. So you don't need to learn programming, but it would be useful. How much time does it take per week to prepare? Um, it also depends on how serious your team is and yeah, cause for FTC, I know it's very time consuming, like last year when it was near the tournament and we, we, we were urgently needing to fix our robot. I went in like for probably like almost eight hours a week.
Okay. Um, so if there's no final wrap up questions, um, I think that'll be it for today. Um, thank you all so much for uh, coming to our uh, coming to our workshop. I really, really appreciate it. Um, also, feel free to check out any of the other Logistem workshops if you want. Um, they're also really fun to watch. And uh, uh, yeah, have a great uh, have a great night uh, or day um, wherever you are. Okay. All right. Thank you.